There are a number of factors that have uh, significantly increased the rate of breast cancer. Probably the largest increase in the United States has come from mammograms. Mammograms are x-rays, x-rays cause cancer, and these are fairly significant doses of x-rays to a woman's breast. Now, at the same time that they're giving x-rays, they're crushing the tissue. Damaged tissue is more susceptible to x-ray damage than non-damaged tissue. And then they kept giving the, uh, the mammograms to younger and younger women. And younger breast tissue is more susceptible to x-ray damage than older. So it was just uh, a, a, a perfect storm of ugliness, of, of cancer creating phenomena with the mammograms that they created. More and more mammograms pushing women to get them. We know that they cause uh, breast cancer. We've known since 2000 when the Cochrane uh, Center published their study showing that women that get mammograms die 4% more often than women that don't. Die. I'm not talking about get sick or, or have breast cancer. I'm talking about die. That's a huge number when it comes to death rate. So mammograms are a primary cause of breast cancer in the United States. Another major factor is the extreme overuse of antibiotics. Probably 95% of all antibiotics given in America today are unnecessary. Antibiotics are amazing drugs when you need them, when you have a life-threatening situation. Outside of that, what they're very destructive. Uh, they kill off the microbiome in the bowel, which we live off of them. We're, we're outnumbered by them, 10 to 1. So we're, we're kind of a parasite on our bacteria. Uh, there's about 100 trillion of them, more or less. There's only about 10 trillion of our cells, more or less. So you give these antibiotics and kill off your good bacteria. The bad bacteria and the fungus yeast flourish in your bowel, and that's a toxic soup. And so you're, you're killing off these healthy bacteria with the antibiotics. The second thing that the antibiotics do that are, that are uh, really, really deleterious to your health is they kill off the power plants of the cells. You know, we don't have a central electricity. Gener we, we run off of electricity. Our bodies are electric. We, we run off of electricity. But we don't have a central organ that generates electricity and sends it out to the body. We have a central nervous system. It controls that we have a central pumping system that pump, pumps blood. We have a central detoxification system, but we don't have this organ that generates electricity. All electricity is generated locally inside the cells by little guys called mitochondria. And for all the world, they look just like a bacteria. Evolutionists would say that they're intracellular obligate bacteria. I, I don't think that's the way it happened. Uh, creationism is much more probable from the scientific evidence and the geological evidence. Uh, but one way or the other, these little mitochondria have cell walls, they have their own DNA, they look just like bacteria, and they live inside of our cells, and they're where the electricity, the power plants are. Antibiotics kill those off. I think that's a major cause of chronic fatigue and, and situations like that, and it is a cause of cancer because as it kills off these energy power plants, the power goes down in the cell, and then the power the cell is not able to use, its normal energy pathways, <clears throat> the Krebs cycle, it has to go to an alternate pathway called the emden meyerhoff pathway, and that's the pathway that cancer cells use. And so as you get this power outage in the cells, because antibiotics have killed off the mitochondria, the, the alternate route starts being used, and, and that's that spells cancer. So there are a number of ways, a number of things that are currently causing the use of um, estrogens and, and uh, drugs like prim and birth control pills caused a dramatic rise in breast cancer. They still cause it today if women use them. They're using a lot less of them, fortunately. Uh, abortions were a primary cause of breast cancer. And that's, that data is, has been so uh, hidden uh, it's hardly out there and it's hard to find. But uh, women that get, have an abortion, what it does is it, so the breasts are developing and they're just like blowing up, getting ready to, to nurse this child. And 
that process gets cut off in the right, right in the middle, and it's like it's like a cliffhanger. And those cells are in full development; they just get suspended right there, and it's like ah, and um, uh, much much a dramatically increased rate of breast cancer in those women who've had abortions. Uh, on the other hand, women who've breastfed before the age of 21, their their rate goes down. So there are plenty of things that are causing breast cancer. <laughs> You've got your other things, pesticides, chlorine, fluoride in the water, uh, bromine. Uh, we've got a hypothyroid crisis in America because of the chlorine, fluoride, and bromine in our foods that knock off the iodine molecules and make the iodine inactive. Uh, so there, there's a lot of reasons that we have this just uh, explosion of breast cancer. Yeah, to be a screening test, you know, it needs to be about 80% sensitive. Um, mammograms are about 50, last number, it's all according to study, 52% sensitive, so around half. It will detect, which means it misses half of all breast cancers in women under 50. That is not a screening device, number one. So it doesn't qualify as a screening device because it's missing half of what you're looking for. Uh, number two, X-rays cause cancer. We've known that since X-rays were invented. Madame Curie died of cancer. Rentgen, Dr. Rentgen died of cancer. All of the early pioneers, and then they learned to protect themselves with lead. X-rays cause cancer just as effectively today as they did back in the day when they were discovered. So you're shooting uh, serious doses of X-rays at the breast, and the younger the breast, the more susceptible, remember. <clears throat> And, and uh, so you're accumulating, and, and x-ray damage is cumulative. Every year, it, you know, you get an additional mammogram, it's, it, it's not let you get one and that's standalone. It's cumulative, the x-ray damage. So the more mammograms you get, the more likely you are to have breast cancer. And at, if you're under 50, it has only half a chance of even detecting it. And then the other problem with mammograms is that over detects things that aren't cancer. So that's called false positives. And then they're w repeating the x-rays, so now you've got another uh, huge dose of radiation. And then they want to biopsy you. And uh, let's just talk, women over 60 are just virtually all gonna have some ductal cancer cells present. Just like men over 50 are gonna have I, right here, right now, I'm sitting there will be some cancer cells in my prostate. Am I going to die of prostate cancer? No. Um, are those women, 99% uh, of them with ductal carcinoma cells in their breast, going to die from that? No. Leave them right there. The immune system knows they're in there. They're surveying them. Everything's in, in harmony there. Then you go sticking a needle through it and rupturing that and knocking them out of where they're being surveyed, cutting across veins and lymphs, and then it's off to the races. That cell gets into a, a cut lymph that they cut with a needle, biopsying it, and it goes and lands in the liver or the bone or the lungs, and, and then, then you've got metastatic breast cancer. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, mammograms are, are not, not healthy for us. And, yeah, and it is interesting that you're going to use it's even more interesting that they want to use something that causes cancer to treat it. So x-rays cause cancer. X-rays cause breast cancer. Mammograms cause breast cancer. You know, if they said, we're gonna give you an x-ray of the breast, women would be a little more aware. But we use this cute little fuzzy term, oh, we're gonna do a mammogram. <laughs> uh, yeah, a breast x-ray with lots of x-rays. The effectiveness of early detection, let's just say that clearly that mammograms are not early detection. That's one of the many reasons that they don't increase survival rate at all. The initial studies that came out from the two counties and Twin Cities, they were, they were lies. They statistically manipulated all the numbers. They double counted certain women that had done well. Women that hadn't done well, they, they didn't count them at all. So there's, there was this amazing like 31% increase in survival rate if you did mammograms, and that was just a lie. We now know that if you get mammograms, you're more likely to die 
4% more likely to die. So it doesn't save any women. You'd have to, to image 2,000 women for 10 years to save one life with mammograms. In the meantime, you probably caused 30 or 40 cases of breast cancer over here, and maybe 10 or 15 of those died. So I'm not saying that no one has ever been, their life has been saved by getting a mammogram and finding a breast cancer, but on the other hand, uh, for every one that's been saved over here, there's probably 10 or 20 that died over here uh, and, and had their breast amputated and uh, their lives just, a destructo machine ran through their lives with the, all the biopsies, all the fear, all the amputations, all the drugs that they were given, the radiation causing congestive heart failure, uh, making them die younger, and other cancers coming up from the radiation that they got from their lungs and bones. and it's, it's, The whole thing is devastating. Standard medical care has everything compartmentalized. And there is no compartment. Everything functions together. <laughs> so it was interesting. My first medical degree was as an osteopath. And the philosophy was never, ever, very different than the allopathic community, the MD community. Uh, first of all, we had to do a rotating internship. So we got a very broad exposure to the whole experience of medicine and, and how everything went out there. Whereas MDs were allowed to go straight into a residency and so they didn't get this broad exposure. And then when I was working at MD institution versus DO, so at the MD institution the training was like, well this is what this is and this is who you refer it to. They were referral specialists and you see that today. And at the osteopathic institute it was, well this is what this is and this is what you do, and this is how you treat it. So we learned to be physicians, not to be referral specialists. <laughs> Our bodies are not compartmentalized, so when we're experiencing physiological stress, it dumbs down the immune system. You see, your body prioritizes. So um, you've got the sympathetic and the parasympathetic. So the sympathetic system is the fight or flight. It's like survive right now. So when we get stressed, our body goes into fight or flight mode. The, the blood gets shunted from the, the fore part of the brain, which is our creative, thoughtful, uh, arty, you know, all of the creative stuff and the thinking stuff to the center of the brain where you know how to run and climb and jump and escape and evade because who knows what's coming after you, the bear or the lion or the mastodon or whatever it is. I've been chased up a tree by a rhinoceros in Africa. I've been chased up a tree by a bear in Alaska. I've been <laughs> run down by an elephant in, in the Congo. Anyway, uh, Cape Buffaloes, it's interesting. Yeah, the fight or flight really does kick in and you can do a lot of amazing things when that juice gets flowing. So. When all of that is happening, so, so think about it. What does the immune system need to be doing? Oh, killing a few bacteria over here, killing a virus over here, killing a fungus here, maybe killing a cancer cell over here. If you're being chased by a bear, does it matter if those bacteria or fungus are hanging out for a few minutes? No, not important. So the body's shunning all of its resources to survival, evasion, and escape at that moment. It's called fight or flight. So all of the energy is going to other things, not being artistically creative, not fighting this fungus over here or this bacteria over here, but living to fight another day. And so it shuts all of those systems down so that you can survive skinny up that tree faster than the bear, run and get in the cave from whatever. So survival, escape, and evasion. And so when we're in continuous fight or flight, then it's always dumbing down the immune system. The, the, neuro, the neurological system's always communicating, saying, we don't need you out there right now. We need all of our energy resources over here. So that's how stress dumbs down the immune system. So if you have an abnormal mammogram, does that mean you have breast cancer? No, especially women under 50, more than half of those, probably upwards of like 80 or 90 percent, 
or what we'd call false positives. So they're saying that you have, might have a suspicious area. They get you back, they give you more cancer-causing x-rays, and then they probably don't want a biopsy. And all of this trauma, all this fear, and 90% of those know you don't have. So it's called a false positive, and mammograms are famous for false positives. So just because you have a positive mammogram does not mean that you have breast cancer. Thank you.